In this lecture, we talk about geometric impossibilities. So say you start with two points on the plane, P0 and P1. So we have the Cartesian plane R times R, and you construct a set of points, P0, P1, P2, all the way to Pj. So the way to construct these points is via lines and circles. So first, how do we draw a line? So the line is constructed by joining two points of the set Sj. So say you have certain set like this, so if you want to draw a line, you pick any two points and then join them by a straight edge. If you want to draw a circle, so the way we are going to draw a circle is you construct with center as one of the points in SJ. So you take any one of these points in SJ from P0 to Pj, make that as the center of the circle and the radius as the distance between two points in SJ. So the radius is distance between two points in SJ. So the points, the way they are constructed are as follows. So say you're given this set of points, you want to construct more points, then further point can be constructed as intersection of two lines, L1 and L2, or it can be intersection of a line and a circle, or it could be intersection of a circle with circle. So this cannot be concentric circles. So two circles which have to intersect cannot be concentric. So these are not concentric circles. So let us see this procedure in how to construct an equilateral triangle. So we already have two points. You start with two points P0 and P1. So you always start with at least two points. So say this is P0 and this is P1. So first we join these two points by a line. So join two points by a line. Then to construct an equilateral triangle, we have to construct another point here. So to construct another point, you take a compass and the radius of the compass is P0, P1. So you keep the center of the compass here and then draw an arc right here. Then you keep the center of the compass at P1 and the radius is again difference between two points P0 and P1. So see the radius is the distance between two points distance between two points. So again the radius, you keep the compass here, draw the cut right here. So now you have another point here. So this point you call as P2. So now you can join these three points and what you get is an equilateral triangle. So this we have seen in middle school constructions that how to draw these lines with just straight edge and compass. So we can draw an equilateral triangle via this procedure. So ancient Greeks could not draw certain lines and uh, certain points they could not construct this way. And those became the impossibility theorems. So those theorems are easy to prove using this uh, field theory. So the first theorem is if this point x, y is constructible. So obviously these points lie in the coordinate plane R2. So they have two coordinates, x coordinate and y coordinate. So if the point is constructible, then this q x is to y over q over rationals is 2 to the power of s, where s is 0, 1, 2. So when you first start with point P0, you take this as the origin. And when you have point P1, the difference between them you take as one unit. So you start with something rational, and then you construct other points. So we are saying that this q x y is to q is 2 to the power of s, where s is 0, 1, 2. So this could be, when s is 0, this could be 1. When s is 2, this could be 4. When s is 1, this is 2, and so on. So the first ancient problem we discuss is duplication of a cube. So the ancients wanted to construct a cube with volume 2. So as I said, you have these two points P0 and P1, this is one unit, and they wanted to construct a cube whose volume is two units. So that means they had to construct a side which is two to the power of one three, which is root of x cubed minus two. And since this is root of this, you have q two one third to q is three, which is degree of this polynomial here. So this is three here, whereas you have two to the power of s here. So you can take values 1, 2, 4, 8, and so on. But there is no 3 here. So it is not possible to duplicate a cube because you cannot get a constructible point so that you can construct 2 one thirds. 
So second problem was trisecting an angle. So in general, it is not possible to trisect an angle. So in general means for large number of examples, it is not possible. So this is from this formula, cos three theta is equal to four cos cube theta minus three cos theta. So this is a trigonometric formula. So this you assume as given to you. So we will show that pi by three is not constructible. Like it is not possible to trisect pi by three. So say three theta is equal to pi by three. So cos three theta will give you one half. So now you just rewrite this equation here. This cos three theta has become one half. So now you rearrange things. So instead of four, we are putting in eight. So two cos theta cube divided by two so instead of cos theta, you write two cos theta, so three by two, half you just copy as such. Instead of two cos theta, you write x. Here also x, so this equation becomes x cubed minus three x minus one equals to zero. So this is irreducible by rational roots theorem. So you can see any roots of this have to be rational and they can only be plus or minus one uh, by the rational roots theorem. So now you plug in plus one. If you plug in plus one, you will get minus three. So plug in plus one into this, you get minus three. You plug in minus one into this, and if you plug in minus one into this, this will be minus one, this will be plus three, this will be minus one. So none of these are roots of the equation. So this is irreducible. Now since this is irreducible, degree is three. So if this could be trisected, you will have degree three, just like in this case, and that will lead to a contradiction. Here also this is irreducible, and you have degree three. So you cannot trisect an angle because you get this irreducible polynomial with degree three. Now squaring a circle. So one of the ancient problems was, can you construct a square with area pi? So again, the unit is given as one unit here. Is it possible to construct a square with area pi? So to construct such a square, you first have to construct a side, which is square root of pi. Now the square root of pi is transcendental, and you know that with transcendentals, the degree is infinite. And here we have finite degrees, one, two, four, and eight, and so on. So it is not possible to square a circle. So these three ancient problems were solved only using field theory. So now we have to prove this theorem here. So for the proof, first notice that we always start with two points P0 and P1. So F1, we will just set as Q adjoined with P1, and which is always Q. You always start with two points and you consider these two points as rational points because when the ancients were starting to draw on the sand, they just took two points P0 and P1, and they took unit one between them. And this was P0 was considered as the origin. So this is the origin. So these two points were considered rational. The distance between them is one. So you take first F1 as QP1, which is just Q. You set the next field F2 as Q of P2, where P2 is constructed by this process, either intersection of two lines, intersection of a line and a circle, or a circle with circle. So you start with two points, then you construct a third point, P2, which is just nothing but Q and then coordinates of P2. So P2 lies on this Cartesian plane, so it has X2 here and Y2 here. So X2, Y2. So again, F3, you construct from F2, so you take F2 here and adjoin P3 to it. So F3 is basically you again start with the Q and you adjoin two points to it, P2 and P3. So P2, if you adjoin P2, this becomes F2. So this is same as F2 adjoining P3 to it. So you keep adjoining points like this. So in particular, if you have Fj, this comes from Q of P1, P2, all the way to Pj. And so you will have Fj plus one will just be Fj, like all these, and then your join point J plus one to it. So what we need to show is that every time you do this extension, you go from Fj to Fj plus one, 
or you go from F1 to F2 or F2 to F3, this is either one or two. So if it is one or two, then by multiplicative property, this Fn is to F1, we have just shown F1 as same as Q, this will be two to the power of S, where S is some zero, one, two, three. So obviously one is taken care of if every time you are just constructing a point by intersection of two lines. So this will always be one. So we have considered all possibilities is S is zero, this will be one, S is one, this is two, then S is two, this is four, eight, and so on. So three cases we have to consider. First is intersection of two lines. So two lines are given like this, A1X plus B1Y plus C1, and here. So first you eliminate Y here. So if you eliminate Y here, so solve for Y here. So Y would be in terms of X. So in terms of some function of X, which is linear. So you plug this in here. So Y would be linear in terms of X. You plug it in here, you get a linear equation. So you get a linear x, so just x itself, no powers of x. So in that case, you have a linear equation, so your extension is just degree one. So linear is always degree one. No line and a circle. So if you have a line like this and a circle like this, again you solve for y. So again you get something linear in x, you plug it in here. So you can plug it in here and you will plug it in here. So you eliminate y in the first equation and plug it into the second one. If you plug it into the second one, you can see you will get degree two. Degree two from here, degree two from here, degree one from here. So you get a, this becomes a quadratic equation in x. So this becomes quadratic equation. Quadratic means degree two equation in x. Now if it is quadratic in x, there are two cases. Either it splits into linear factors so if it has degree two, say x square plus, say alpha x plus beta, either it factorizes, now if it factorizes, then you will get linear factors. So your linear factors could be x minus gamma one times x minus gamma two. So in case it has linear factors, then it will be one. Now if it is irreducible, then you can see the degree is two here. So extension would be two. So third case is there are two circles. So equation of circle is given like this. First circle is like this. Second circle is like this. So this is one and this is two. Now subtract two from one. So minus, minus, putting a minus here, minus here, minus here. So this goes away, this goes away. This becomes two G1 minus G2 X. This becomes two F1 minus F2 Y. This becomes K1 minus K2 equals to zero. So you get another equation. So you get a linear equation. Now notice that this G1 cannot be equal to G2 and F1 cannot be equal to F2 precisely because we have mentioned here the circles should not be concentric. If G1 becomes equal to G2 or F1 becomes equal to F2, then the circles be concentric. So you get a linear equation here. So this linear equation mark as number three. So what do you do with linear equation? You solve for Y. So you eliminate Y here. So you write here, Y is in terms of linear factor of some X. And then take this Y and plug this into equation say one here. So you plug Y in here. So you plug Y in here, you also plug Y in here. So what do you get is a quadratic factor in terms of X. So Y is eliminated, instead of Y you have X. So you, what you get is a quadratic equation in X, just like here in this case. And then you proceed precisely as above. You get either one or the extension as two. So obviously if this splits, this quadratic, this becomes quadratic equation in X so this becomes quadratic in x. If it splits like this, you have degree one. If it does not split, that means this is irreducible, then you have degree 